Season's greetings. This is the Honeysuckle Housewife. Welcome to day two of Vlogmas. Today, I am doing a collaboration hosted by Inspired Living with Christy and the Junkin' Chick. Tonight, I'm having a Christmas party, so I'm going to show you three easy appetizers right okay. now. For our first appetizer, let's begin. When I'm having a party, all I do is look through my freezer and see what I have. I am just about to come up with something off the top of my head. I see that I have cream cheese, three stacks of it, extra sharp cheddar. I have some brie. I have puff pastry sheets. These things are amazing. And I have prosciutto. Yes, I just, some of this stuff I bought, bought earlier, but a lot of this stuff I just have always in my refrigerator. I keep this stuff. And then I have, um, what is this? Some type of, um, Little cheeses. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, guys. I love shopping at Aldi. And this cocktail shrimp of theirs, this cocktail shrimp ring, is life. Okay. This is all that you need for a party, really, just to be honest with you. For a cocktail, for appetizers, I'm going to put this out. And they're going to love it. Well, before I get started, I am so thirsty. I'm gonna drink some of this. Um, it's ginger pineapple tea. I love this stuff. I think I had it in my other video too. It's just this one's pineapple. The other one I had was hibiscus. They taste so good. I can never show you with them full because I always drink it before I get to record. <laughs> what I have here is this is plastic, um, but it looks real. I don't know if it looks real on your camera, but it certainly looks real in real life. Very nice. So let's get started. These are really cute. I'm gonna rinse them off. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these now. Just gonna dump the golden tomatoes right here on the napkin. I want them to be pretty dry. I'm just rolling them. I guess this is my technique to dry them off. Once your tomatoes are rinsed and dried, it's simple to go into the next step. All I'm doing is taking toothpicks, sticking them right at the top of each little golden tomato, and putting them around my tray, making a very cute and very easy decoration and style. When it comes to entertaining, I think the most impressive and best way to do it is the simplest way. This is a very easy appetizer. You can use, you can use anything. I'm just using tomatoes because I have several things, several other appetizers. Okay, so I decided that I am not gonna put the toothpicks on the ones in the middle. Okay, this is, this is what I have. It's very simple to add cucumbers to this or make a whole little salad on a skewer. Whatever you want to do, you can do to this type of um, appetizer and that is the best part. It's a bit early. I'm literally just gonna put the lid on it to protect that. And then um, I'll protect the tomatoes too. But isn't, I'm putting the refrigerator. Tell me that's not cute. The second appetizer that we are having for the Christmas party is a yummy antipasti. Its make is a creative assortment of meats, cheese, fruits, or nuts. Today, I'm using cheddar cheese, a cured Italian meat called prosciutto, with other cheeses and berries. Okay, so let's talk about prosciutto. Um, this is a very, you know, it's a salted, cured meat. It's eaten widely throughout um, Italy and France. And since one of my majors is French, of course, when I studied abroad, I ate this a lot, like every day. And so I love it. I brought it home, you know, and I serve it at all my parties. I'm gonna show you what to do with it and how to eat it. But first, I'm layering the cheddar on a slit 
Or you can use a serving platter of your choice. Then I'll add some cocktail crackers and soft flavored cheeses, but that comes later. I prefer the big round crackers for my dish. That's just me. Now, prosciutto can be mm, intimidating to some guests, so I suggest pulling it apart into smaller pieces. The meat itself is flavorful, so one pack goes a long way. I mean, okay, I've completed um, kind of pulling apart the prosciutto, and I'm going to give you a little demonstration of how you can build um, a uh, an empty plastic plate. You see this cracker here? All you need is, is a cheese. Now usually brie is used. Brie is another kind of B-R-I-E. You see that pretty often in the stores. Pretty easy to get it's soft white cheese. That's what's traditionally used, but I'm using what I have. <laughs> as well should you, um, as long as it tastes good together. Um, so I'm putting a slice of sharp cheddar, a nice little piece of prosciutto, then a blackberry right on top. That's how you build it, and then you eat it like that. Something sweet, something salty, on a cracker, or by himself without the cracker. It's perfect. And I'm gonna leave this here so that my guests can kind of see how it's done. The next thing is just putting down the prosciutto um, onto the slate or onto the uh, empty pasta tray, whatever you're using. And it's very simple. I just really just laid mine on top of each other and all in one spot. But you can make it any kind of design that you like. Don't overthink it. This is the puff pastry and my third dish, my third appetizer. And um, it really doesn't matter what you do with puff pastry, it always looks fabulous and pretentious. So if you're looking for something with some wow factor that's easy, get some puff pastry. All I'm gonna do is open it up. Now, you should work with it while it's cold, but not room temperature, because then it starts becoming a little bit too difficult. It sat here a little bit too long. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it firm up, and then I'll be back. In the meantime, I'm boiling some blackberries with some sugar on the stove. I used about nine ounces of blackberries, or a container and a half, and half a cup of sugar. I have taken the puff pastry out of the refrigerator. It's nice and cold again, and so now I'm slicing it up into um, thin pieces and then I'm gonna cut it in the opposite direction now you can cut it any way that you want to this is just the way that I decided to do it um, if I were to do it again I would have cut them bigger <laughs> so that's my recommendation however I will add you really can't mess up puff pastry well unless you burn it but anyways <laughs> the very next thing is I'm just taking the pieces apart spreading it out on the tray so that they can bake evenly without touching each other and then I will glaze some butter on them before I put them in the oven oh my people my people for my people let's talk now um, everything is almost ready as far as my appetizers go I'm gonna have to go get ready very soon so I just want to take this time to show you um, the next step now. Stir it, stir it, yes. Do the magic, yes. Okay. And I'm kind of rushing, so I don't want to have to be like, oh, it needs more sugar to thicken up, or you know, it needs to boil longer to boil out some more of the moisture. No, I'm not gonna do that. Are you kidding me? I'm grown. Um, I don't have time for none of that. When I'm done with this kitchen, I am leaving. That's why. Ta-da! I'm going to be using some, uh, just a gash of cornstarch to thicken it up. Are you kidding me? I need a spoon. I'm going to show you how much cornstarch I'm going to use. This is probably too much. Look at that. That's nothing. That's all that you need. Bam. Put it in there and be amazed. I have to probably put the camera down to stir this on properly. Anyways, the next step in the process is to slice up the brie 
I decided to cut off the edges of which is like a wax that's edible. I cut that off first and then decided to slice it up and make small pieces to layer on top of the puff pastry and then drizzle the blackberry sauce next. I did not get um, footage of when I did the last two steps which is layering the brie on top of the puff pastry after it's been cooked and then melting it just a little bit in the oven and then drizzling the blackberry the warm blackberry sauce on top and serving it warm I did not get footage of any of that so I will add a little note after this so that you can see what I did I wish that every day of the year